Right, I'm just going to do a quick uh, appraisal of where we are right now. We've done the X carriage, which is this part here, uh, complete with its uh, stepper motor uh, and also the fixing for the drag chain here and also the limit switch, terminal block and inside are all those various wheels and so on. Then we did the two Y plates uh, and the one on this side, which is uh, on the left as you look at the machine from the front, has the fixing for the uh, drag chain uh, and also it has the limit switch there. Uh, the one on the right uh, is a mirror image apart from those two items I've just described. We then brought it together uh, by doing the gantry and that consisted of these two maker plates, one which has got the X-Carve logo on there uh, and the other one uh, which hasn't. And remember that the V-grooves for these, one is on the very front and the V-groove here is on the very back. And also remember, uh, this uh, maker plate at the back here has the slot running along uh, nearest to the top. When you're handling this and putting it to one side, remember it's got its little pulleys at the bottom here, so it's liable to have a mind of its own and could slip off a bench. Right, we're now going to do the Y-axis with the uh, last two long pieces of the uh, maker slides material. Now you'll notice that this on the side where the V pulleys will fit, that's the part with the uh, V-shaped uh, extra bit of moulding there, uh, that there is uh, a slot. And if you look at the video of the construction, uh, in one, you'll, you'll see this slot somewhere uh, near the bottom, uh, I think. Uh, but uh, there is a clear instruction that says that if you have uh, the limit switches, make sure that the slot on the maker slide is in the upper position. So in other words, that slot uh, needs to be uppermost. And we do that for both sides. Now the way we go about this is pretty much the same uh, as we've been used to before. Uh, this time uh, making sure that uh, these plates which are going on the end, uh, the straight side uh, is next to the side uh, with the extra moulding for the V pulleys. And don't forget to put in the little threaded uh, T-nuts in there before uh, you put the plate on. And if you look at the plate there are three holes and we're using uh, the lower two of those three holes. Now I've been following the Inventables instructions to the letter, uh, but I've now decided to do a slight departure uh, from their order of things and I have checked with Inventables uh, and they say yes this is perfectly okay to do it. And let me explain. Now, my workbenches are slightly too small uh, to get uh, the X-carve in uh, safely sitting on the top. And you would have seen that I had two benches uh, pushed together in order to achieve uh, a stable working platform earlier. But now that uh, we've reached this stage, I thought uh, that I might uh, attach uh, everything to the, the base. And so um, I checked with Inventables, they said, yes, you can do that if you wish. And that then will allow me to have a stable base so I can move everything around on top of a, one of my normal workbenches with no problem at all. Now, when it came to doing the base, uh, I decided that I would go further than the instructions uh, required me to go. And, and this is just me. Uh, you don't have to do this if you don't wish to. Uh, but uh, you'll note that the, uh, the longer bits of framing here and at the top stick out. Uh, and so I measured uh, that and worked out that they each need to stick out by 30 millimetres. So I used my calipers uh, to get the positioning here and here, there and there, uh, giving a 30 millimetre gap here. I also uh, used my square and I set it up such that I could get uh, measure uh, that that was square and made sure that that was absolutely spot on. When I came to uh, positioning this centerpiece, uh, its position is dictated to an extent by the screws which go through from the other side, 
uh, but there is still uh, a little bit of uh, wiggle room. And I measured uh, the distance between these two uh, and then made sure that these distances were equal. And I also checked that that was perfectly square. So that's just me being uh, an engineer at heart, if you like. Uh, and then I made sure everything was nicely tightened up. And with the larger uh, baseboard, uh, I had 144 of these screw inserts to put in. I, I was a bit worried that it was going to take forever, but actually, I think it only took about 15 minutes. Uh, I used my uh, cordless drill driver. Uh, I made sure the torque setting was set uh, reasonably low. With this uh, uh, Festool CXS, I had it on torque setting 5, uh, and I just took care to make sure I was doing everything uh, vertical to the sheet uh, and it was very easy indeed. Now the only curious thing I found, and this may be my uh, error in that I have not read the instructions correctly, and that is when I was fixing these uh, Y pieces onto the frame, uh, there are two screws here and two at each of the four corners, um, I'm pretty sure I understood the instructions to say that you needed 10 millimeter long, five millimeter uh, screws for that. Um, and there weren't enough of them. Uh, and when I uh, checked the depth of the slot, I believe that the maximum should be eight millimeter long, five mil screws. So I'm using uh, from the, the kit provided uh, these eight millimeter long, five mil screws. Right, we're now doing the Z-axis, which uh, again, I've looked through the instructions, they look terribly easy. Uh, insert the bearing uh, so it's flush on this side uh, and then put in the two screws uh, to hold it in place. That's that done. We're now going to attach this short piece of maker slide uh, to the plate. Now note that the uh, V-section parts of the maker slide, which are here and here, uh, are going to go on the outer side. Here's the plate, and these are the heads of the screws. I've turned it over, so these are the ends of the screws, and there's the bearing, and then just below there are two holes. Those two holes are going to match up with uh, the holes in the maker plate. And don't go all the way, uh, just get it so it's nearly there. And that's that. Now, because of my uh, decision to mount uh, everything onto the base, as I've done, uh, this part is very slightly different from the instructions. In the instructions, uh, it does tell you to do this bit, which is to put uh, these uh, little uh, T-lock nuts here and here. And at this point, they say to put the uh, make a slide onto there. but uh, we're actually going to, because uh, we've got the board attached, we're going to put these through and we're going to do all four at the same time. And this really is easy enough to do. It's not, uh, it's, it's not hugely difficult because in the um, Inventables instructions, it tells you to turn the whole frame uh, up the other way so that you can look at what you're doing. But uh, this is simple enough to do uh, the way I'm showing you now. And I'm now going to introduce this uh, piece of maker slide uh, over those uh, T-lock nuts, over that pair. And this perhaps is the only fiddly bit because, of course, we've elected to um, do it this way. And once you get that in place, then uh, I've got a little block of wood just to make it flush at the bottom. Uh, and I'm now going to tighten up the uh, top ones here. And then after that, I'll, I'll deal with the ones at the bottom. So that's quite easy. Um, incidentally, if you look at my other videos, you'll see um, the, this little device made by Wera. It's a little ratchet. It's absolutely brilliant. And that's that uh, tight. Now, one of the stages you have to go through is to run this uh, nut up and down this uh, threaded portion uh, up to 30 times and I would suggest that rather than holding it in your hand you might want to do something like this. Do not whatever you do allow it to come too close to your drill 
uh, because you could strip the thread. Now I've got the limit switch uh, fitted there and this is the Acme thread and I followed the instructions and put this um, uh, drive uh, pulley on the top here. Now, uh, let me just say, I wasted 20 minutes by looking for two nuts, which I thought had to go on this thread. I looked and looked and looked, couldn't find them, and, and I really thought that, oh dear, Inventables had made a mistake. No, of course not. I then looked more carefully at the instructions and discovered that with the Acme thread, I didn't need these particular nuts. And so uh, the instructions cover all the different sort of bits of kit that you may have ordered uh, or that you may have. Uh, and you just need to make sure you're reading the bit of instructions that applies to your setup. And that's what I failed to do. So <laughs> a lesson learnt uh, and now I crack on. Right, we're now going to mount the stepper motor. Uh, I've already put uh, one of the drive pulleys in place and uh, the wires I'm going to have coming out at the front here. Now, just before I do the final tighten up, there are two things to do. Uh, the first is to check the height of this uh, pulley here and I've not tightened it fully, so I'm now going to get that uh, so it's in the right position. Right, the next job is to uh, move the motor assembly that way in order to tighten this belt, uh, and then we're going to tighten those screws. Now, in order to uh, juggle that and the spanner, uh, spanner and the uh, wrench, I'm going to put a piece of rubber in there. Uh, you could use something else, something similar yourself, uh, that will just force that motor away, and that, that leaves my hands free. Uh, to do this uh, bit of tightening up. I'll just check the tension there. Probably sufficient. So I'm going to do the spindle mount slightly out of order. It should be wiring next, but I want to do this uh, now uh, just to tidy up this bit here. Uh, now it's quite easy. Uh, you take this uh, uh, mounting uh, bracket uh, and we're going to do uh, V-wheels in a similar fashion to what we've done before. Uh, you thread one of these uh, bolts through and then a spacer and you do that for all four uh, and then in here there are uh, large holes for the adjusting uh, nuts, those are the eccentric uh, nuts and smaller holes for ordinary ones. Right, the next stage should be uh, to thread this in from the bottom uh, but I can't do that because I've now mounted this on the board. Uh, but there is a simple way around that. Uh, this assembly here is held in just with these two screws going into the maker slide at the top. So I'm going to very carefully remove those, like so, and carefully move that out of the way. And now I can slide this on as it should be. And that may well drop down as I uh, replace this, but I'm not uh, too worried about that. Now I'm going to feed this in very carefully and get this back in position. Now, bearing in mind uh, this is all uh, on bearings here, when I apply the pressure to tighten these up the final bit, I've got to hold on tight to it so it doesn't put any strain elsewhere. Now I'm putting these... 10mm uh, long screws in here, uh, but I'm not tightening them at this stage, they're just going in so they're ready to be tightened once the motor is in place. Uh, now the motor is going to go in and uh, I've added, it's not, not something that Inventables have suggested, uh, I've added a little bit of sleeving just here uh, to help protect those wires uh, where they go down. So that's been lowered down so that, that is flush there with the uh, extra bit of packing around the motor. And as always with things like this, try and do, do the tightening up evenly. And I've just slipped that cover on and now I can uh, tighten these up the rest of the way uh, nice and evenly.